we're going to start with talking about the power of words. You know, God spoke the world into existence. He spoke, he said, and, and it said, the Bible says, and God said, let there be light. It doesn't say that he waved a magic wand or he touched it. It says, God said, let there be light. And also, out of the overflow of our own hearts, the mouth speaks. So what is in our hearts does come out of our mouths, and so we're going to talk about that some, too. Now, we all know that Plexus is awesome. <laughs> it is, you know, if we could just let people know of our enthusiasm and belief in it, you know, that would go a long ways. But when we're sharing Plexus, our words are powerful. I've been in the company for a year now, and I'm a senior Ruby ambassador and maybe an Emerald ambassador by the end of this month, if not then, next month. And um, so I've observed some things, and, I, and, and when you're experienced, you see things that other people don't see. So I will see another ambassador's posts on Facebook, and I go, oh, and they're not on my team, so I'm not going to go say, um, honey, you need to, you know, I'm not going to coach them. And it's not to criticize them, it's that people don't know. They have no idea that they're pushing people away or that they're turning people off. And so hopefully what I share with you tonight is going to help that not happen to you. You've heard, and even in the coaching, um, the, the team training group that we're doing right now, one of the foundational activities that the team is doing is to talk to two people a day, talk to two, contact two new people a day. Now, I did tell them, if you want to set it to one person a day, if that's, you know, your life, that's fine. You know, you need to commit to something, but, but they, they know that if they only talk to one a day, it's going to take them two days to get points, you know, for this point system we have set up. But you hear about talking to two people a day. But I know a lot of people who are not even silver ambassadors yet who are talking to two people a day. And it's not so much what they're doing, it's what they're saying sometimes, how they're coming across. Now, I have done this, so I can tell you about it. Everything I'm going to tell you not to do, I have done at one time or another. You know, we get ready to show up with people, and then we start to throw up. We are so excited about Plexus that, you know, we might meet someone in a store, and we overhear them, or we get to talking to them and find out they're pre-diabetic or something. And I have actually said these words, oh, girl. <laughs> you know, like, girl, <laughs> let me tell you about this stuff. And we mean well. Because we do love the products and we know they work and we truly care about people and sometimes that approach works because someone can see how excited and passionate we are. But when we just vomit plexus all over them, sometimes you see that deer in the headlights. You can tell you've lost them, but you're just so excited and you just keep talking. Or maybe meeting someone at Panera for coffee. I've met a few pretend, potential ambassadors for coffee. And, and I know I've done this, where I just go on and on, and I talk to them, and I, go, and I know that they're just sitting there, you know, like, shoo, because it's just too much. And so the first place to start is by listening. And I'll talk a little more about that later. But if I had it to do over again on some people I met for coffee or people I've talked to in a store or whatever, if I had it to do over again, I would listen a lot more and not just talk and talk and talk. So that's the first place to start. But we're here to talk about what to say when you do talk. That's, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. First of all, there's three common mistakes that people make when talking about their products or their business. The first one is that the common mistake, number one, is that we talk about the products or the business. People don't care. <laughs> they don't care when we focus on the ingredients and all we do is talk about how to use the products. We give facts and statistics about the company or every detail about the comp plan. I have lots of ambassadors who still have no idea how the comp plan works and they're getting money every month and they have no idea how it works. That will come later. That's not the important thing. While we're talking about all that stuff, they're sitting there thinking, why should I care? What does this have to do with me? Because what's people's favorite thing to talk about? Themselves. <laughs> so that's what they're thinking about is their health issues, their lack of money, whatever their situation is. 
And when we are just going on and on and on about all this stuff, they're like, oh, get me out of here. I'm busy, you know. So we need to talk about what the products and the business can do for people. That is what is going to draw people in. We want to talk about the benefits and the results that people experience with our products and business. We want to focus 80% on benefits and 20% on details. I recently was reading back over a, a coaching book, coaching a, a coach who coaches business owners and pastors and team leaders. And he said that as a coach, his job should be 80% listening. And I don't know if you've ever paid anyone to have them coach you and they do 95% of the talking. And you know, to some extent that's good because you do um, learn from their experience and stuff. But I don't know that I've ever had a coach that did 80% of the listening. So instead of saying something like, Slim has Garcinia Cambogia and beet juice and it's sweetened with stevia and start telling all these features of Slim, then instead say something like, you know, Slim can help you sleep well so you'll wake up with energy. You see this shift there that you're talking about the benefits and what they could get out of it instead of what's on the label. So instead of saying, the Plexus Comp Plan is great because it's not a binary plan. It has full compression and you get commissions on PV. And they're thinking, P what? <laughs> how many people say, what's PV? Um, that's going to mean nothing to them. And that's kind of like the old school network marketing purse kind of thing with the charts and the stand and the marker board and all that stuff. You know, the living room meeting where they're doing all that kind of thing. So that's not, that's going to turn people off, especially nowadays. I think certain companies gave the entire industry a bad name. You know? So, um, and thankfully we're overcoming that. But um, instead of giving all those details and you're going to talk about the business, say something like, you get paid well so you can stay home with your kids. So you never have to feel guilty for not being there when they need you the most. Because that's where people are and that's going to reach their hearts. That's what they're thinking, could this business do this for me? So here's a formula for you. My products or business can help you blank. And that would be get this benefit or result. So my product slash biz can help you blank. And so you're going to think about what benefit they're going to get from it. So we want to sell the destination, not the airplane. They want to get to Hawaii. They don't really care that much. They don't want to buy the airplane. They just want to get to Hawaii. Do we have coffee ready? Oh, we sure do. He's got coffee ready if anybody wants some. It's decaf so you won't be up all night. <laughs> okay. Okay, so comment, a common mistake number two, and I see this a lot in, with people, and that is that the benefits are too boring. Because everybody out there is saying the same thing. So you're hearing stuff like make money, or lose weight, or just simply look younger, or have more energy, which is true, and that's good stuff. But there is so much out there, Facebook, and people just scroll right on because nothing catches their eye. Um, you know, you see, you see this a lot. And so you want to fire it up to get their attention. And one way you do that is by adding your own personal tweak to it, your own personal story, your own personality. That's one way to do that. You know, people really buy feelings. When they buy Plexus, they want to, they, they, they want to feel better. They're buying hope. They're buying what it could do for their future. You know, they, they've had all these health problems or they want to lose weight or whatever else, or they you know, want to start the business because their family is so strapped financially. They're buying a dream and they're buying feelings. And so that's what we want to appeal to them on. We want to talk about the experiences and feelings that they want. So instead of just lose weight, which is everybody is saying that, say something like, and that, now I, don't, I wouldn't say this because it doesn't sound like me, but lose weight so you'll feel totally confident wearing shorts this summer. I mean, I can't imagine you saying that to a friend. So I don't know if that's, that's just an example. So don't, don't quote me on this. You know, 
No one's going to come up and say, oh, lose weight so you can feel totally confident in shorts this summer. That's, that's a little salesy. It's just an example, though. But you see what I'm saying. Just make it sound like you. Make it sound like you're talking to a friend face to face. And then, um, and what I said before about be home with your kids so you never have to feel guilty for not being there when they need you most. And you could get that idea across and just say it differently. So this formula would be the, the products or business can help you blank. And what would go in that blank is get this benefit so you can blank. And that would be get a bigger benefit or feel this way. So we're giving them, it can help you do this so you can get this. And that's going to appeal to people because we're actually casting vision for them and we're speaking life into them because it's a good thing to give people hope. When I um, started the exercise program eight years ago, you know, I weighed 100 pounds more and, you know, felt terrible and, you know, all, had all kinds of health issues and stuff. And so when I bought it, I was buying hope and just a little spark of hope. Maybe this thing could help. It would have been, I wasn't buying losing 100 pounds because I couldn't imagine that I had, I didn't think I had that much to lose. And I also just, that would have been too big. And so I was actually buying on feeling and hope. So when you're talking, include feelings. Yes. Well, I was just going to make one comment about the stay home for your kids too. We're empty nesters, mm -hmm. and um, there are lots of reasons to want to stay home and or be part time or whatever you know. Right. Pursuing hobbies and or you know, whatever. There are oh, lots yeah. of reasons, so it can be even broader. And that's we're going to talk about that next. Okay. So about that same yeah. principle. So yeah. okay, very good. Um, you want to include feelings in what you're talking about. So we don't want to make it cold, um, business-like, because our buying decisions are made in our subconscious mind. We buy on feelings. The emotional side of our brain is what makes buying decisions. And that people purchase because of the way it makes them feel. And one last thing is you want to use the words they're using. If you want to get some ideas for some really great Plexus posts, Scroll through your friend's Facebook, read comments, and see what kind of words they're using to describe their problems. Because you have a solution. God has set up business so that people exchange money for service or things that are solutions to their problems. And so that's what we're doing. We're providing solutions to their problems. So that's a great way to get ideas for your posts is just see what your friends are saying and mirror those same words back to them. In what you write, they're not going to know you're doing it, you know. And don't say so and so said, <laughs> you know. But and you want to change it around. But that's a really good way to hear the words they're using, how they refer to needing to lose weight. One of them may say, you know, I got to get this tub of lard, whatever. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That's pretty rude. But, <laughs> but I mean, the words they're using, like I've got to get this weight off of me. So then that's what you're going to make a post about. Are you ready to get the weight off of you? So you're, you're kind of spying on them, <laughs> but, but what you, you know what, this is not slimy and sneaky. You are trying to find ways to serve people. And if, and we need to connect with them on a human level and on their emotions. And so this is a method. You're doing some research and work to do that. You're okay. Listening on Facebook, right? You're listening, listening. and not only Facebook, but, um, in a grocery store, you know, wherever you go, you're going to start listening. You're, 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 what you're doing is marketing research, this market research, even magazines. You know, um, the magazines and um, big websites, although they pay a lot of money to do research. And, yeah, that's the third one I felt this evening. Wow. That was an earthquake. Oh, yay. Um, okay. Uh, Oh, okay. These companies are paying a lot of money to do all this market research and stuff. So use their stuff. Go buy some magazines and see, you know, Women's World and all those, you know, take note of headlines. And the ones that, that drew you in, that made you want to buy that magazine, use it in Plexus. Because you know, they already paid all the money to, to, to find out what to say. Okay, common mistake number three is using the same generic message for everyone. We tend to want to cast our net wide because we don't want to leave anybody out. What if I gear this to moms and there's this old man over here who wants to buy it, you know? And people actually sell more when they 
narrow their message down, but that doesn't mean you have to restrict yourself to a certain group. I um, am, I have, I'm, I have, my youngest child's nine, but I'm 55 years old, so I can talk to, you know, midlife women, but I can also talk to moms who have kids at home, you know, so I can, um, I have those experiences to draw from. And so, um, so you'd want to customize your message. So if you did a post about moms that want to stay home, then you could gear one to empty nesters. You know, like she said, you know, do a post that said, if every, you know, everybody's gone and now you're ready to do some crafts and stuff, but you feel like you're going to have to have a part-time job, you know, you might want to try this or, you know, whatever. Um, so moms, t and you'd want to think about what is, what's their concern? What are they thinking about? What's their problem? Might be a mom that wants to be home with their kids, needs more money. So that's how you'll gear your message. You might have college kids who want to pay off student loans or not get student loans. Maybe you know some realtors and they need steady income when the market is slow. There's just all kinds of niches that you could gear your message to. The thing to think about is, is W-I-T-T, -T, what is important to them? because it is not about us. We need to think about what is important to them in our words and our phrases when we're talking about Plexus.